welcome to the Thoughtful Gamer Podcast, episode number 59. As always, my name is Mark, here with me today, the best podcast guest in the entire world, my wife Amber. Hi everyone. You've been on the podcast, what, three or four times? Yeah, three or four times. Not that often. Including one very memorable time where you talked about your strategy in terms of uh, manipulating people in games in order to secure victory. And I've gotten more comments about that podcast episode than I think any other episode. It's very puzzling to me. I still don't understand why Mark and Orion and others were surprised at my thoughts. Well, the comments I've gotten have been people who are like, oh yeah, I'm exactly like Amber. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So... Maybe we'll revisit that someday. We should. We, we should do we a part two. We have a bigger two. audience do a part two and get more people involved from Amber's perspective. Because I thought it was a very interesting one. Mm-hmm. But today we're doing something very different and I'm so super excited because I've talked semi-frequently about game design ideas I've had floating around in my mind and... I haven't, I've done some work on some of them, but not a ton of work or actually like put, well, I have one prototype out, but it, it needed a lot of work. I haven't gone past that stage with any of my ideas. And partially that's just because it's kind of at the bottom of my priority list. I have thoughtful gamer stuff. I have my part-time job. I have the volunteer work I do with one debate club. And, you know, we just bought a house, we got to do housework, so game design always kind of falls at the bottom, so I sneak it out when I've caught up on things, which is almost never. So, I have lots of ideas, and I keep tabs on those ideas, but I haven't done a whole lot of work on actually designing a game. But, Amber and I have an idea that we want to work on together, and I think together we shall motivate each other and push forward and actually get something done here, even if it fails. I hope so. The creative energies sometimes do not flow, especially with my work, but I'm very excited to make this game happen because it's about one of my favorite topics in food, and that is chili peppers. Yep, but before we get into that, I want to mention that we are planning to do a question and answer podcast but to do that, we need questions. So if you go to the thoughtfulgamer.com, you'll see on the front page there, I have a, a post that you can submit questions to that we can answer uh, on a future podcast. It'll probably be me, Matt, and Orion, maybe Ben, maybe Amber. I was going to say, you haven't talked to me about this yet. I don't know. If you want Amber <laughs> to be part of this and ask, we'll see what the questions are. If there's okay. some that you would like to answer, we could have you on if you want. Basically, how we do this is that I come up with podcast ideas, uh, except for the interviews. Obviously, I'm interviewing something, and then I'm just like, hey, who wants to be part of this podcast? So, mm-hmm. we'll do the same thing for the question and answer one. But so far, I've only gotten one question, so go to the thoughtfulgamer.com as the cat yowls <laughs> in the background. She's very upset for some reason. Well, she, we she, know why she's mm-hmm. upset. She spilled her food. No, no, she's upset because she wants better food. Yes, she is clamoring for the soft food and not her hard food because she spilled it all over the floor because she got startled when I stood up. Mm -hmm. Yep. The dumb, dumb cat. Anyways, ThoughtfulGamer.com. Sorry, TheThoughtfulGamer.com. Or is it... Wait. Now I don't even know the name of my own website. Mark. (laughs) It's TheThoughtfulGamer.com. Yes, I had to mind. I, mean, I don't know. But... I, I had to mind typing it in my mind to remember if the the was there. You'll see it right on the front page. I think it's called "We Need Cues to A," which sounds marginally dirty, but whatever. Ask us questions; we will answer them on air, so to speak, uh, about anything about games, about other things we like. Amber and I've been golfing lately. I uh, watch a lot of movies, pop culture stuff. I don't know anything you want. I don't care. We have very varied opinions on these things. Uh, oh, yeah. Man, we should do an Amber and Mark special where we <laughs> get into some stuff. No, I don't think so. I think, be, I think we're good. Maybe a bonus episode for the patrons. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's that. Let's talk about this game idea. So, do you want to tell a story of how we came up with the idea? Um, 
I don't know if it's really a story. I talk all the time about wanting to open a restaurant centered around chili peppers and being so excited about chili peppers and putting chili peppers on everything, including Mark's sandwiches and almost killing him from time to time. Oh, that sandwich. Woo! <laughs> that sandwich was... That hurt. Yes, but I was fascinated one day to learn that chilies are not native to Asian cuisine, which was fascinating because everything I love about Indian food and Chinese food and any other kind of Asian region cuisine Thai. Thai has chili peppers in it, and chili peppers are one of my favorite features. Uh, it was fascinating to learn that it's actually relatively a recent addition to the cuisine. Yeah, because they, they were initially only a New World mm -hmm. plant. They, yeah, they originated in South America and then were transported around the world after the Europeans discovered it. So it is really relatively recent. Yeah, and so... <laughs> and so we were having dinner with your parents, because they came to visit a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And you were talking about this, and then I was like, huh, that'd make for an interesting Euro game. And then you were like, yeah, we should do that. And here we are. Yeah, I thought... That's the story. I thought you should do that. I wasn't really talking about me at the time. Well, yeah, but... But I was like, do you want to do this? No, I think this would this be a great be exercise. Fun. So, yeah, we want to make a game about how Pepper's integrated into either... Or both Indian, what, Indian and Southeast Asian cuisine? Yeah, I don't know if we want to pick it expansively around the world. That's one of the questions we'll be pondering. Um, because they were also introduced all over the world. Um, Africa, actually, some theorists say they were introduced to Africa and then came back to the Americas uh, through African cuisine. Um, definitely introduced to Europe, um, although not nearly as popular. Um, Not spicy ones, anyways. Bell peppers became popular. Sure, sure. Um, they definitely became used in cuisine, but not so integrated or so famous. Well, there's peppers used in Spanish cuisine. Yes, um, definitely. Not not most of mainland Europe, though. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So I don't know if it should be a worldwide game or if we should focus on a more particular region. Um, if we do a worldwide game, it'd probably focus more on the trade and introduction to different markets. If we focus on it locally, it'll probably have more to do with um, introduction to local cuisine and how it shapes the recipes um, and traditions. Yeah, so that's kind of the big question to start with but right now where we're at in terms of the brainstorming is my goal with this brainstorming thing is kind of just to eliminate options that you don't like because sure. I think you're more, far more picky on in terms of game mechanisms that you enjoy okay whereas there I've seen almost any I've seen a game where almost any game mechanism works well so I'm willing to be super flexible and, and work within anything mm-hmm just as a baseline to kind of eliminate some options. Okay. We haven't done a lot of research yet. I know you're going to order a couple books to do some research. Yeah, I want to be involved in the history and the design and the theme. I haven't thought so much about game mechanisms, so I think this will yeah. be a good conversation. Well, and we haven't really worked on a project like this together. Yeah. We tend to do separate projects and then kind of bring the other person in mm -hmm. to assist. But we've have we ever done like a project that we've done together, like kind of side by side, other than existence as being married? Existence. <laughs> I mean, I guess finding the house was kind of like that. Yeah. But that's not a huge project. That was just you know, doing the same thing just, over and over. Just activities. We haven't created. Yeah. Anything? So here's how I envision this working. Because I don't know how game designers work together. And every time I've heard about... I've heard about designers talking about how they work with their partners. It's always been a different answer. So I don't think there's any, yeah. like, go-to of, like... Or pattern that we should necessarily be following in terms of working with a, a co-designer. Not that we would follow established norms anyways. Because we're both kind of rebels. 
So, <laughs> here's how I envision this. You do a lot of the historical research and mm-hmm. communicate those things to me. The things that you find interesting and fascinating. Okay. I will probably take the charge in terms of coming up with a prototype, and then we hone together. And then I'll probably end up doing most of, like, the tweaking and fiddling. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And then you kind of keep the thematic string tight? Yes, but I also want to do the design. Well, of course. I am, I envision... Beautiful chili peppers being featured prominently on this very colorful Oh, you mean the visual design? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's a late-term thing. But you have to have it in mind at the beginning, how beautiful it will look. Sure, you can think about this, (laughs) and if we ever have any say on the visual design, you can instruct the artist. Okay. Because we we haven't talked about this. If we end up making this game and it ends up being good, do we want to look into self-publishing, or are we just going to pitch it? To design or to publishers? I don't know. I could probably find a really good artist. I have artistic friends. Interesting. Because I have never thought... I don't know about actually producing the idea, it. The idea of self-publishing scares me to death, but you might enjoy that because you're more... You like that businessy stuff more. Yeah. So maybe we could look into self-publishing if this ends up being good. We could just do Kickstarter, right? Yes, but I mean that's that's way harder than it looks. Okay, well, or we'll you can pitch that's it a to that's a, few a future and see how it goes. Yeah, but... that's something for for future us to yeah. determine. I don't have a designer lined up or anything. But I mean, but if I have we the, the idea is if we give it to a publisher, they may not care about our input in terms of visual design because that's what they handle. Well, I will write up a contract that makes them care about it. That's true. You are a lawyer <laughs> and can write up contracts. There we go. No, we're not getting scammed. All right, so yeah. the first idea is what are we going to focus on? So the big things we can focus on are, I thought of three three kind of things. We can focus, and I'm thinking of this in terms of point of view, because I like games that have a strong point of view. We could do like the very generic Euro thing and make it not really a point of view, but just having it be the system. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I feel like I would have a hard time designing to that so i want to create a vision of what what the agency of the players is so the two things we could do we could do traders so the Mm -hmm. people trading transporting the seeds i assume i doubt it's like full peppers they're sending across the the atlantic or pacific whichever way they went dried peppers oh they might have have dried it i will i will research into how peppers are cultivated and, and yeah that's a that's a history researching question so we could do the traders, in which case it's probably a near world map, and we mm-hmm. can it could be about trading routes and maybe contracts and fighting, you know, predicting more entrepreneurial stuff in terms of predicting demand and trying to more geographical stuff probably. Mm-hmm. We could do the POV of local merchants, so pick probably a single area. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, maybe not even, like, just India. Maybe, like, a section of India or part of Thailand area, you know, Southeast Asia or something like that. And we kind of zoom in on regional trading once the peppers arrive there. Mm -hmm. So, you were purchasing them from the ships. We have businesses on the board. I'm thinking more, you know, Concordia-like where you're trying to expand a network maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. That could be something. Or the POV could be of the peppers. So you are this kind of godlike advocate for <laughs> each particular you know, f- two to four or two to five or however many players types of peppers. And you're trying to make your pepper the most in demand and highly bought one. And that could involve both the trading, the international trade and the local stuff. I don't know what's most appealing to you. I know what's most appealing to me. So I, I don't like the point of view of being the pepper, but I do kind of like Not the idea the pep- of... I mean, the godlike <laughs> pepper advocate. Uh, I don't know. Um, okay. But I do kind of like the idea of having multiple roles within the game, so not everyone is doing the same thing. I think that might be hard in your own games. Oh, know. to actually be a- asynchronous. 
Yeah. So some some people are traders, traders, some people are merchants. Ooh. And I don't know how that would work necessarily. I don't have a vision, but I really like that idea. I mean, it's certainly possible. I, I, I definitely prefer that style of game, especially when we're talking about the whole history of the spread of peppers, rather than just making it everyone performs the same role and kind of competing on that level. It's more fun to have a okay. broader perspective. I mean, at that point, we're looking more in the style of a of a historical simulation game, which leans more towards like war game style stuff, which could be interesting. I like that idea a lot. Oh yeah, I mean, um, it makes sense now that I hear about it because yeah. that's the kind of game that you enjoy. Yeah. The problem I find though is then how do we do that and keep the focus only on the peppers? Because once we do it more from a historical simulationist mm-hmm. angle, I mean, based on my very cursory knowledge of the history of this, there was, you know, trading was much more insidious than just, you know, food. Right? During that era, right? You have to think about, well, are these same companies trading slaves? Are these same companies, you know, enabling the colonization of places like India? And then you have to deal with those historical aspects, which might be more... I don't know how we reconcile the idea of it being a historical game, but also only about chili peppers. Can't you... I don't know. Can't you pare it down to where it's just one topic? I know it's not true to history necessarily, yeah. but the idea isn't necessarily to create a purely accurate historical simulation as much as um, introducing some of the key players um, and having people work within those parameters. Yeah, I think it could be done. I mean, I mean I'm being reductive in my classification of things, like but the, we the could idea, certainly look into that. The idea would have it be start as a historical possibility but the idea isn't to simulate history or to make simulations of history possible the idea is just to take it from one starting point and then the players can make it whatever they end up making it so do you imagine the players starting in kind of a blank slate role and then they can do different parts of this so or I... do you do you imagine it that Certain players are, okay, you're the trading factions, and you two players are the merchant factions. I I like that idea, and I like starting the map with some pre-established trade routes. Oh, sure. Some pre-established relationships. Like, doing a starting point where things are set up, um, and then having the players create a brand new world off of that. So we're we're aiming modestly just for the players to be able to create a brand new world. Well, they can create. They can create. <laughs> the trading factions can create whatever trade routes they want. The merchant factions can create relationships with new players and outside of the pre-existing ones. Um, sure. And then I don't know who are we calling the other faction. Yeah, that's what I was. That was um, my next question. Like we have traders, we have mer- local merchants. Do we want to incorporate government? Mm, no, that would be boring. No government. I mean, maybe based on my research, we'll find out that the government actually played a very interesting role. And in that well, I mean, case, we could. We're talking about 16th century European traders. I mean, they were government-sanctioned, if not outright well, government companies. Yeah, government-sanctioned, but that doesn't mean the government necessarily played a very interesting role. I don't know. I think you'll find they will, but... Mm. But maybe not separate from the traders. Maybe it's a combined thing. But I don't know what the other roles necessarily would be. I don't know. The cooks? The the, the, Oh, we could go real narrow. The influencers. The influencers. Uh, Yeah. On the gram? (laughs) (laughs) The the, the people who created the recipes and introduced it um, to all of the important people of the world. I think that's an important faction. If that's, I mean, that's a question I have that's I think will be interesting in terms of what you read in the books is how that even functioned. Yeah. Like, is it just that they were like, okay, here's the produce we have, here's something sh- shiny and new, and then all of these, what we know as dishes, just kind of developed ad hoc among the common people, or were there, I mean... 
There I think the idea of, but the idea of what, like a restaurant thing was such, I would assume such like a super high class thing or not even in existence. Like how many restaurants existed in the 16th century? No, it would probably be more like there was this cook working for a rich family who sure. introduced this new ingredient. Oh, um, yeah, and then it's a their, nobility and thing, then right? And then their family used the ingredient and it spread from family to family. It is very much a social media type situation, I think. I haven't done the research yet. That makes sense. Um, but they can even be fictional players, these influencers. Um, we'll, we'll definitely do some research to figure out if anyone is identifiable. I think probably that it's... part of history is going to be really difficult. But it's not hard to imagine the existence of these people. Okay. We'll see where the research takes us. This is Yeah, we'll see the research. That's probably as far as we can go. This is a really interesting perspective I did not anticipate of doing an, a completely asymmetrical, like, role simulation, pseudo-simulation idea mm-hmm. instead of a Euro game. Are there any games you're imagining this being similar to? Like, I'm having a hard time picturing what you mean. Not really. <laughs> okay. This is just how I want it to work. <laughs> it's just how you want it to work. Well, I mean, that's great. We can have a vision and then work towards that, and maybe we find some way to do it. Yeah. What I was thinking would be most interesting is on the part of local merchants. Mm-hmm. And having it... So, I'll mark this. So I got my notepad here. That's just one idea. We. I'll it mark that as, as a main idea. It might end up being too ambitious, but let's not kill our dreams right off the bat. Let's do some work to kill them. So my idea, what I thought was most interesting is the idea of the local merchants. Because there, you have built in the idea of buying and selling. So you have entrepreneurial action, investment, all this good Euro stuff. You also have the idea of this new plant coming into the world and the merchants needing to actually influence to a high degree the demand for that ware, Mm -hmm. for those wares. Now, I don't know, again, this is something we'll have to look up in the historical research, like were these companies that were sending the peppers over, did they establish, you know, their own merch, or did they have their own merchants, or was it local merchants? I don't know how much of a foothold they had in necessarily different regions, Mm -hmm. but the idea of being able to, of having built-in buying and selling, as well as kind of introducing something to the local culture. Mm-hmm. I thought that could be an interesting play on things. Mm-hmm. We'll make that our backup idea. Also, I should recognize that we're not, this idea of brainstorming a game idea on a podcast is not new. As I look over on the shelf and see Trade on the Tigress, which you may not know was actually made during the Ludology podcast. Oh, yeah, you did tell me about this. Yeah, we haven't played it yet, but. Mm-hmm. I did get a coffee. All right. So let's talk about key ideas. I think for both both of our ideas, a key is influencing demand. Whoa. Okay. 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 Back up. <laughs> the key to any game is how do people win? <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's almost a question we asked last with your idea because that's the hardest part. I don't know. I think if you want to have an asynchronous game, you have to have different goals. But asymmetrical. Then... Asynchronous is different. Okay. Anyways. Asymmetrical. All, almost all um, games are asynchronous. All board games. Um, you have different goals, but then you have to have a to standard it. form of measurement. So you could have, for influencers, increments of fame. And each increment of fame or influence is equal to, for the merchants, an increment of profit. Yeah, and, so that's just yeah. that's just a victory point system. Yeah, exactly. Are you fine with victory points? Some people find them bland. Uh, what are some alternatives in this kind of simulation? Um, I don't see any. Because I don't want people to be racing towards an ultimate goal and who completes the goal first. I don't yeah. really want that. Um, I mean, you basically, you could have I, I like the idea separate of, specific goals for each class for mm-hmm. lack of a better term, that aren't tied to victory points, you can have... But then who wins if everyone reaches their goal? Well, it's easy to break a tie. But you don't want it to be a race, right? I don't want a race. But I so don't we'll, probably like do, we'll probably do an established game length. 
and then whoever has the most points at the end of that. Either like a set number of rounds or until some other secondary aspect is reached. That's pretty standard. Yeah. In terms of doing victory conditions, well, let me pull out my handy copy of Building Blocks of Tabletop Game Design, the fam- fantastic book from Jeff Engelstein and Isaac Shalev. Yes, Mark loves this Friend book. of the podcast, Jeff Engelstein, one of the co-designers of Trade of the Tigris because he is one of the co- mm-hmm. or was one of the co-hosts on Ludology. Mm-hmm. So we've gone full circle here. Uh, yeah. So let us turn to... This game is... There, this book is I have cool. no... I have no, like, incentive to, to hype this book. It's just a really good book. It's really good as an encyclopedia. Don't try to sit down and just read it, because that doesn't work. Uh, but I have read a couple of these mechanism sections, and they're very interesting individually. Yeah, so, I mean... Victory point from the game state. So end of game victory points. You have player action victory points. That's all victory points. You have races. We don't want to do a race. I don't think that makes sense to do a race with this theme. No. Uh, Player elimination not relevant. I mean, this is the... That's a game end thing. I mean, honestly, victory points makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. Like, even games that are really super goal-oriented, like, you could do... I mean, that's how it's going to work with an asymmetrical game. Like, the the way each side gets victory points is different. But, like, even in a coin game, that's essentially how it works. Yeah. You know, you have two different goals, and you add up those things to a certain number of points, which are, for lack of a better term, victory points, and then that's, you know, how you win. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think it's pretty obvious you, we end up using a victory point system, uh, just because that's how, you, and it's a good way to establish value. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll put and VP we system. Still, we still want the kind of Euro game feel. And I feel like victory points are very important yeah. in Euro games. Well, I don't know if they're necessarily just... <sighs> points in general. I mean, outside of player elimination, there's not a ton of options mm-hmm. in terms of choosing victory. You have... If you don't have, like, elimination, you have, like... Goals, like separate goals or a race to a certain goal. Everything else you can essentially whittle down to victory points, even if they're not mm-hmm. actually called victory points. Um, you know, looking at the shelf, like even, I mean, Scrabble is a victory point game. You just don't call them victory points, but you're still tallying points. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyways, so some sort of victory point system. We can work that out. That's details we can work out later. I think an idea, so in terms of what do we want the play, what kind of tensions do we want the players to have, what kind of feelings do we want to impart among the players, what are your ideas? It should be a good competition. Okay. Yeah. In other words, like, when we're talking about Euro games. I don't really games, want them to be a, a directly fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not good for this kind of game. Um, but I do want it to be a really good competition where you have to play your turn very well and take advantage of situations on the board to sure. maximize your turn. And and I think we can. This certainly gives us room for not direct fighting, but indirect fighting. You know, stealing someone's territory that or they're they're selling from or their trade route or competing over lucrative contracts or whatever. Yeah. Whatever we do there. So the the kind of Euro game indirect stuff. Mm-hmm. Um no direct fighting, yeah, we can I don't want to bring governments and military into it necessarily. No. I think that expands the scope, especially since we're only focusing on chili peppers. What I was thinking of was in terms of I want this to be a more interactive Euro game, I think. And I think this is something I'll kind of state up front and mm-hmm. not necessarily defer you. But I'd rather have it be... Well, as part of this is I want to be able to help facilitate the game that you're imagining. Because yes. it's your topic you enjoy more. And I like the puzzle aspect of it and the idea of having an external force eliminate options and kind of put barriers in my way. So you could have like pure engine builder style Euro games, which are great. Where you're kind of just... Taking your, you get your resources and you invest them and you get bigger payouts and you build up an engine and, and go out from there. That is not what I envision. I Correct. I don't necessarily I mean, enjoy those the most. Euro games almost always have some sort of growth. Sure. But I think the more highly inter- interactive ones are what we're picturing here. So yes. I'm thinking of, have you played Brass yet? Nope. 
You gotta play Brass. Actually, maybe I played it once. I think you did play it once. Yeah, yeah, I did play it once. So that's super interactive. I think I enjoyed it. There's Brass, Food Chain Magnate. I like Food Chain Magnate. Um, Concordia, I think, is fairly interactive. Concordia I like was that. Good. So those are the kinds of games I'm thinking of. Even more interactive than a Lacerda game, probably. Yeah, or even, you know, train games are, are super interactive. I don't think that's the way we want to go, but I think leaning more towards, like, a splatter game, like Food Chain Magnate, than a pure engine-building game like, I don't know, Roll for the Galaxy or London or something. Mm-hmm. I think that's what you want also, right? Yes. Cool. So, we'll put down Interactive Bureau in parentheses splatter, so I know what I mean by that. Uh, um, what does that mean? Oh, that's the publisher who did Food Chain Magnate. Oh, They're known okay. for highly competitive interactive Euro games. Sounds good. Which leads me to my next question. What's our target in term? What do we want our target to be in terms of the kind of player? So you can have interactive Euro that's not super cut, though. That's pretty easy to get into, like Concordia. Mm-hmm. Or one more like a Splatter game, where literally part of their design ethos and publishing ethos at Splatter is that you should be able to lose the game on the first turn. Where, what are you envisioning, or do you have any opinion on kind of cutthroat nature? I mean, I guess I envision that you could do poorly in your role, but I'm not envisioning any kind of elimination possibilities. Um, sure. And the interaction, I don't know, I, I guess the traders could fight a little bit, but if we're starting with pre-established trade routes... Well, I don't know if we are. Well, maybe, maybe Ooh, not. I mean, that's a I, I don't know. I don't really see it being particularly mean or hard. So, closer to Concordia than Food Chain Magnate? Yeah. I mean, I like a little bit of competition and the ability to do much better than your opponent, but not lose, necessarily. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we're not going to have player elimination. Yeah. What are we, Barbarians? I mean, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. elimination is not always bad. No. I mean, it's I in Twilight see, Imperium. I don't see it in this game. Yeah, no, I don't either. Not yeah. at all. All right, so before we get into specific mechanisms... Oh, and final question in terms of how we want to envision this hero. Do you want it to be... Well, this is more of a your preference thing. What do we think of luck? Do you want it to try to eliminate luck as much as possible, have it be more open information, or do you want to incorporate... Do you like decks of cards and occasional die rolls? So, it might be an unpopular opinion, but I really like elements of luck. Okay, no, no, I do too. Like, a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, we like luck. (laughs) And it shouldn't be luck-based, necessarily, but I like some random elements that force the players... No, that's great. Now we can have decks of cards and die rolls. Yeah, I like all of that. Cool. Yeah, so... This fits with kind of how what I think your preferences are. Yes. You like high variance games mm-hmm. that are kind of interactive with each other mm-hmm. and bring excitement yes. in a point of view. Yes. Cool. This is close to what I thought these answers would be, which is good. All right. Next, I have some questions f- for you in terms of things that you can find that I'm curious about in terms of when you read these this history stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did I write down? Uh, so how, it'd be interesting, I don't know if this is out there, and I hope it is, because this is the kind of history that I'm most interested in, Mm -hmm. because when you, when I read that, like, it's cool to understand that, oh, peppers were integrated into, say, Indian cuisine much later than we realized. It was not original to, or it's not an old part of Indian cuisine, uh, because the peppers came from the New World. Great. Well, my question is, how are they integrated? Like... Mm-hmm. did, like we said before, did just common people go to the market one day and then there's these weird plants and people are like, oh, try them, they're spicy. And common people just went out and incorporated them into their dishes and then, you know, they shared recipes and over time we got kind of established traditions uh, in terms of cuisine. Was it something where a ruler... Was like, hey, everyone, everyone's now going to use these peppers. We're going to grow tons of them and put them in your food because I think they're awesome. Uh, how does that 
work because the mm-hmm. development and evolution of cuisine is such a fascinating thing. Yeah. But the actual process by which it happens, I don't know how that happened back then. Yeah. So I think that that's going to be something really fun to find. Yeah. I, th- I think it will be um, really impactful, too, to how we shape who the factions are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, at least in a lot of areas, it was... The local people who kind of just picked up on it? I mean, I assume so. Most important developments are bottom up. Mm hmm. So. But, yeah, the, like, were there these influencers who did it? And, on the gram? And, and also, what's really. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Sorry. Do you have a better term? <laughs> influencers? I hate the term, but no, there is no it's better a good one term. in this case. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, what was I going to say? The. The sheer variety of peppers is also really fascinating. Like, you would almost think that the traders would pick up on their favorites, one, two, or three, maybe. But so many varieties got transported and traded. Um, Yeah. And and so I will be interested to know if that was influenced by who the traders thought their buyers might be. Or if the traders were just taking everything they could and seeing what stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Or probably, I'm guessing you're probably a lot influenced by where out of South Central America they were exporting. Because certain peppers were indigenous to certain parts of South America, obviously. Well, y- yes, but I'm assuming most came from the eastern countries. Sure. Yeah. Originally. Yeah. Yeah. And then the thing I'm curious about is to what degree where were peppers just incorporated to existing dishes or were there like brand new dishes invented? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there was some of both, but I'm curious what the main mm-hmm. development was initially. That, that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. So now we're finally to the bottom part. And this is just a way to know, figure out what kind of mechanisms you like or dislike um, or don't care about so I can start eliminating some options. So I'm going to call this game Mechanisms, this is what I've written down in my extensive notes, colon, Interesting or Discard. I should have come up with a better name. Okay. Um, So those are your options, Interesting or Discard. A lot of this, though, is contextual. So I might say I don't like something, but it might be okay in the game. Or I might say I really like something and we'll just Well, we'll and we'll talk about it. what those mechanisms are good for and okay. what they're not good for. So the first one, worker placement. You know what I mean by that? I really don't like worker placement. It you reminds, do not. It reminds me of Agricola. <laughs> and I hate Agricola. You don't like any worker placement? Well, see, I, I will enjoy some worker placement games, but I do not enjoy it objectively as a mechanism when taken by itself. I guess we don't have a lot of worker placement games. Not a ton, but even like Viticulture. I enjoy that game, but I do not enjoy placing my workers. What do you not enjoy about it? It reminds me of Agricola. <laughs> wow, you got really <laughs> scarred by Agricola. I, well, the greatest of all the worker Maybe placement I games. Maybe I don't like Agricola because I don't like worker placement. Okay. I don't know. So, yeah. on the discard... We'll put worker placement. And I think it's fine to discard worker placement from this type of game. It's not really what I'm envisioning anyway. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. I think I think the setting needs to be more localized for that to make sense. Yeah. All right. Action points. I do like action points. Action points are fine. You have a certain number of points. Yeah. Different um, things cost different points. That seems fine. And you can, ha- you can have a bunch of different things that they represent. So it gives you more choices. Action points is like a very generic idea. But I think it works in a lot of different contexts, and I think it keeps things interesting if you have different things you can do. Sure. What about the thing where there's just, like, Terra Mystica? Oh, no, you haven't played Terra Mystica. Like, dang it, (laughs) that was my go-to example. Just a situation where you have a certain, there are different actions you can take, and everyone just takes one at a time until everyone passes. So Um, just kind of like action selection, I suppose. Like in Twilight Imperium? Yeah, sure. That's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, I don't really have an opinion on it. Well, it's not discard. This is just to find the discards. Okay. Uh, next, we have Rondell or Concordia-like cards. I 
don't really remember Concordia that well. I remember enjoying it, but... So in Concordia, you have a hand of cards? Yeah. Each one has an action on it, mm-hmm. a different action, and then on your turn, you play one of the cards, you play the action, but you can't play that card again until you play the one that lets you pick up all your cards. So it limits it a bit. I like decks of cards, but I don't really like the short deck where you have to reshuffle and retake everything into your hand. You don't like that? Okay. No. So no deck building kind of thing no, either? No, 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 no. No deck building. Okay. I don't know if you've played a Rondell game. So a Rondell is when you have like a little action wheel. Mm-hmm. And... There's some limitation on each spoke of the wheel, or each section of the wheel has a different action on it. Mm-hmm. And then there's some limitation on how many spaces forward you can go. So maybe you can only go to the, one of the next three spaces, but then, you know, you don't want, you can't go backwards after that. You have to swing all the way around. So the, it's like action selection, but it's limited in, a, in kind of an artificial way. Is that something you'd be interested in keeping, or do you hate it? I don't really have an opinion on it yet. It doesn't right. sound that interesting to me. But I will not discard I it. Don't want to just say no. If we're doing an ace, I put trading between players like Catan. But if we're doing no. an asymmetrical, that doesn't really apply. No, I want I want all the trading and interaction to kind of be built in. Built the game in, mechanisms. not free form trading. Exactly. Yeah. No free form trading. Okay. Event cards. Do you like event cards? I do. I really that like. That seems event like cards. something you like. Event cards. And I think event cards would go really well with this game. Yeah, you could have storms and shipwrecks and that kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, network creation. So, like uh, again, in Concordia or Power Grid or anywhere where you're trying to build a network oh, yeah, or something. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I like. I that. think that fits this game. Yeah, we got rid of deck building. What about event cards like card driven war games? So, like Twilight Struggle. Yeah, yeah, I really like that idea. That could be something interesting to incorporate in a Euro game, because I don't know if it has been done I, before. I really like that idea, and I definitely envision it in this game. Really? Okay, I'm going to yes. underline that once. Because it we introduces. You could do the first card driven Euro game. It introduces historical facts. Yep. And, and some it does action points. And some randomness and action points. I really like it. Okay, I'm gonna start. I start it and I underlined it. <laughs> uh, role following. So I mean, that's like yeah. Twilight Imperium, the the strategy cards. Oh, I see. Um, Where someone or Eminent Domain? Did you play that one? I don't yeah. think you have played Porter, uh, Eminent Domain. So someone plays a card, they get a strong version of that action. I, Everyone else then gets a little action. I like the. Mechanism. I don't know if it works on an asymmetrical game though. I don't know, but I I like the mechanism. So you don't do okay. discard it. So I'm not a huge fan of it. Really? I think it works real well in Twilight Imperium because it's not the whole game. Exactly, yeah. I don't want it to be the only thing you can do. Yeah. But if you're selecting one role and also have different actions you can use your action points on, I think it'd be fine. Okay, that's all I had in terms of like action types. Okay. Um, was there anything you were envisioning that I did not mention? Mm-hmm. In terms of like how to do actions or ways you can do actions? Given that we're talking about an asymmetrical game, you know, we can do a variety of different things, one for each, you know, each role. I don't know if there's anything in a game that you're thinking of. We could ape food chain magnate and do management trees. No, not in this game. I love it in food chain magnate. No, no, I think that's too too connected to food chain magnate also. I think this is a good start. I have a better picture of what you're envisioning here. I, I mean, I don't really have a grand vision, but despite not having a grand vision, I do have very many strong opinions on what I like and do not like. Well, I think this, this is this perfect. Is this is perfect for brainstorming and for the design process, because mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of strong opinions, but I like being given parameters and then working within those parameters. I think that can be very fun. Mm-hmm. So I think we will be good co-designers here. Cool. All right. I think that's all I have. So for those who are patrons, I'm, I'll, I'll take a snapshot of this page as a little bonus <laughs> and send it to you all because you, you can follow along more closely on the design process. I think the next steps in terms of action items going forward, you need to buy and read some history books. Yep. Hint, hint. Yes, Maybe yes. after we're done recording, you can purchase. Okay, so what's the timeline on this project? I don't know. We kind of have to set a timeline or else it will never get done. Okay, let's say 
you do initial history research before we go on Christmas vacation? I was going to say before the end of December so that I can do it on Christmas vacation. Sure. Okay. Before the end of the year, we'll have historical research done. And maybe we could do another on-air meeting. Maybe it's less on-air. I don't know. We'll see how much information there is. Sure. To develop this, because I don't want to do all on the podcast, but we can do periodic updates on the podcast with more brainstorming yeah. and ideas. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out the thoughtfulgamer.com. Remember, we're looking for questions to answer for our Q&A podcast. I look forward to seeing what kind of questions you guys come up with. Don't forget to check me out on social media. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, and now Instagram, <laughs> hashtag influencer, but not about chili peppers, uh, or anything, really. I have fewer, I'm almost to 100 followers, mm -hmm. so I'm pretty proud of that. That's a triple-digit number. <laughs> I mean, it, I've only been there a couple of weeks. Getting over up to 100 seems, it's, a lot of people are following me, and, it, and honestly, I can't even figure out the platform that well. I don't know how people find you on Instagram, but people have been finding me and I'm thankful for it. Rate and review the podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to watch our podcast being recorded live and get behind the scenes information like the massive October newsletter I just sent out, that's like way too long. My finger literally cramped from all the typing. Uh, but I watched a lot of movies because Amber was gone for a week. Uh, so I wrote about those movies you get behind the scenes stuff, you'll get more specifics on our design process. I'm going to write out kind of designer diary stuff to get all the steps exclusive to our Patreon supporters. If you want to help out with that, go to patreon.com slash the thoughtful gamer. We greatly appreciate all the contributions. Thanks for listening, everybody. Goodbye.